The FBI once called him the most damaging spy in bureau history. And today, convicted former agent Robert Hansen has died in a federal prison. Hansen received payments of $1.4 million in cash and diamonds for the information he provided to the Soviet Union and after that to Russia. And he's been in custody since July 2002. According to the Office of the FBI's Inspector in General, we're quoting here, Hansen compromised some of the nation's most important intelligence and military secrets, including the identities of dozens of human sources, at least three of whom were executed. CNN's Josh Campbell joins me now. Josh, you, you worked for the FBI for a number of years. The FBI's long placed Hansen, Hansen in the pantheon of the worst spies uh, that affected not just the Bureau, but, but the country as well. Help people understand just what damage he did over the more than 20 years that he was spying for Russia. Yeah, Jim, this was uh, arguably the most damaging spy in the history of the United States. Robert Hansen, as you mentioned, was an FBI agent. He started spying for the Russians back in 1979. He was a special agent in the New York division, eventually working his way up uh, to FBI headquarters, having access to some of the most classified information pertaining to the U.S. government's efforts to target Russia. Now, he pleaded guilty to passing thousands of classified documents to his Russian handlers. He also, as you mentioned, resulted his work in the execution of numerous Russians who were spying for the United States. One of them, Dmitry Polyakov, was a high-ranking Soviet general executed after Hansen provided that information to the Russians. There was also uh, this plot that was called Operation Monopoly. This was an effort by the U.S. government. This is straight out of spy fiction to build a tunnel underneath the Russian embassy in the United States in Washington, D.C., to spy on the Russians. Hansen betrayed that to uh, the Russians, saying, look, the U.S. government is able to spy on you. That also uh, obviously allowing the Russians to take countermeasures. Now, Hansen himself was eventually betrayed by a spy in Russia who was rec recruited by the yeah. U.S. government. At that time, there was a feud between the CIA and FBI regarding where this mole was. They knew there was a mole. They didn't know which agency. This Russian spy eventually carted out a file that the KGB had on Robert Hansen. And in mm -hmm. the basement of FBI headquarters, this interagency group sat there looking at a fingerprint that was uncovered from a so-called yep. dead drop. Uh, they were able to run that. That matched to Robert Hansen. As you see on your video screen there, he was eventually taken into custody yep. by the FBI. Finally, it's worth pointing that at that point, Jim, you know, there wasn't a death penalty uh, under the Aldridge Ames case. Uh, Robert Hansen eventually decided to plead guilty rather than face that eventual death penalty. He was living out the rest of his years in that Supermax to, facility to your in Colorado, point. found this morning dead at 79. Right. To your point, Josh, as you've been speaking, this is the footage somewhat grainy from, from his arrest in 2001. Uh, and he, he was from an age of dead drops, right, where he, he would walk into a yeah. forest or a park and, and leave something he'd stolen to be picked up later uh, and, and receive things as well that way. But, but one essential fact of this is that he was doing this for, for more than two decades. He, he stopped two or three times, once when his wife discovered him uh, handling classified documents, convinced him to stop, but he went back to doing it. That was quite a breach from the FBI's perspective, was it not? Because there was suspicion for some time before they came about to making this arrest. No, absolutely. And you mentioned the dead drops. You know, what was so interesting is the person in the Russian embassy who ran Robert Hansen, a man named Viktor Shikashin, he also ran Aldrich Ames, who was the uh, mm. famous, infamous CIA spy. Now, the handler would meet with Ames. The Russians didn't know who Robert Hansen was until he was eventually arrested. He took such great care to protect his own identity, essentially handling himself. And so, you know, Shikashin wrote a book and said, look, I didn't know who this guy was until I saw it on my TV screen. As you mentioned, as far as FBI failures. This rocked the Bureau, the larger intelligence community. Throughout his career, even though Robert Hansen worked Russian cases and had access to this highly sensitive information, he was never polygraphed. Eventually, the FBI instituted five-year polygraphs. You know, I was in the Bureau. We got mm. uh, polygraphed every five years because they were concerned about just this case, someone who might turn out to be a spy. And so when you sit in that polygraph room, the first yeah. question they asked you, have you provided any information to someone who doesn't need to know it? Are you a spy? And again, that was all a result of the lax security protocols that were in place that allowed Robert Hansen to spy for over 20 years. No question. Well, listen, some of these persist. And by the way, with technology today, you could have someone take classified documents and distribute them, say, on a closed uh, Internet chat room, such as Discord, as we're seeing yeah. with this ongoing investigation of this airman. Right. As holes are plugged, new holes open up with technology. Josh Campbell, thanks so much.